there's this idea that you're supposed to turn 18 and know exactly what you want to do with your life and I think it's very normal to get yourself involved in a career and then be in your mid-20s or even your 30s and be like oh my god I hate this or is everyone like this is all I've ever wanted to do I'm the happiest I've ever been I would do this job for free I love it so much has said very few people ever I'm Deb Perlman and I have a website called Smitten Kitchen. Smitten Kitchen is kind of like a grandma in blog years. I just started it, it was 2006, and I am here today to make marbled banana bread. So we're gonna take three large overripe bananas, but we're gonna start by mashing these up. And if you don't have a potato masher, but you could use forks to do this. So early in my site, I did a kind of classic banana bread and I just thought, this is it. You only need one great banana bread recipe in your life. But I live with people for whom if it's not chocolate, it's not food, it's not dessert. And they had been bugging me for a chocolate banana bread for a while. And so I made one like that, you get all the intensity of the chocolate part, you get the vanilla cinnamon and the classic banana bread, and everybody's happy. <laughs> Plus it looks pretty. All right, so we've got fairly mashed bananas. I know you think I have my recipe memorized, but we're gonna find out if I do. <laughs> we're gonna add half a cup of unsalted butter, melted, and we're gonna whisk it in. And we're also gonna mix in brown sugar. We're gonna use three quarters of a cup and one teaspoon vanilla extract. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add quarter teaspoon salt. We're gonna mix this all together. And then we're gonna add one large egg. The whole recipe calls for one and a quarter cups of flour. We're just gonna add one cup right now. The only place we're getting fancy. Look how fast that came together, guys. We're almost done. I feel like we make cooking look so intimidating when we use fancy tools. I much prefer to just do it like this. One bowl, fewer dishes, fewer tools, and I also hope that it makes it more appealing for other people because anyone here has probably a fork and a bowl. All right, so we are gonna divide the batters. You're gonna look for about half. Even if it's a little bit more or a little bit less, it's all gonna work out. This is sort of like your classic banana bread, so it's gonna have half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and we're gonna add the remaining flour that we didn't put in the first part. And we're just gonna stir it just until it disappears. In this one, we are gonna add a quarter cup of really good dark cocoa powder and three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips. This is gonna get really dark brown. By mixing the lighter color one first, you only need to use one spatula. <laughs> I'm so lazy, guys, and I wanna help you be lazy too in the kitchen. Let's save our energies for more important things. So we have our chocolate and our regular classic banana bread batters. And we're gonna take a regular loaf pan. I've just sprayed it. So I'm using like a soup spoon. Kinda wanna get nice dollops in there. This one, just using the spatula. And kind of just checkerboarding it in until you're done with the batter. The chocolate part is like no throwaway cake. Like it actually really tastes like a good dark chocolate cake. It's not very even right now, so I'm actually gonna just drop it a couple times just because I really put it in really unevenly. Dropping it a couple times on the counter will kind of make sure that the air gets out and the, any air bubbles come up. I think usually when we marble things, we think like use a toothpick, but I actually find that a butter knife or like a small offset spatula, you get a little bit more of a drag with it, which gives it a little more color. Now the tricky thing is that it's so much fun to marble cakes. I feel like you want to get carried away because you're having so much fun like finger painting, but you don't. You want to do like two to three figure eights through it and then stop, stop. I'll tap it down a couple more times and then you bake it. All right, so we'll put this in the oven. Generally, cakes like this take about an hour to bake, and it bakes at 350. This idea that you would turn your blog into a job did not exist in 2006. Maybe one or two people had done it, but I wasn't thinking about that at all. I didn't like my job, and I wanted a hobby. <laughs> if there's something you love doing, and you can't get out of like a job that you don't, that's okay. You can have really cool hobbies, and you have no idea when one of them is gonna turn into an opportunity to do something bigger. My next career is, I think, gonna be like a career advisor or something, except for I have no idea what anyone should do. I can only tell you that you can get out of it. It may not be easy, but it's, it's doable. It's way better than sticking with something you hate that makes you unhappy. It looks like this when you are done. 
a little bit of the marbling and some of the chocolate chips. Give it 10 minutes to cool down a little bit. Run your knife around the pan before you take it out, just to make sure it's not stuck. I'm gonna go like this. Okay, that's the pro move. And I love it because every slice looks a little bit different. I'm going right for the chocolate part. <laughs> Everyone should make this at home. It's super easy, you can make it, it looks super cool, and you get the best of both worlds with banana bread. There's always stories like, can I make this without bananas? And I'm like, okay, so we need to unpack this a little bit. Why are we making banana bread if we don't like bananas? <laughs> I feel like a banana bread therapist. Maybe I should have gone to grad school for this and done something useful with my life.